My whole process of really becoming the artist I am today was really, really, really judging my music hard as fuck. Like, bro, my favorite artist, Uzi, fucking Future, Chief Keef, like, when I was listening to these niggas, I'm like, bro, how can I make my music as good as this shit? What do I need to do to get my shit on this level? Try to check all those boxes, lyricism, melodies, flows, all that mm. shit. But I'm not just making music just, just to make music. Like, I'm trying to be the best. Like, mm. I want to be one of the best. What's going on, guys? You're watching Kids Take Over right now uh, with my guy Lunchbox. For how's it going, bro? Oh, it was good. Long time coming, man. I um, I've been keeping up with you for a while, actually. Yeah, man. But like, do I call you Lunchbox or do I like people call you Lunch, probably, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, it don't matter to me, man. Lunch, Lunchbox. Some people call me LB. I mean, for a while you went by uh, Young Lunchbox. Like that was your name yeah, for a while. Yeah. What whatever happened to that? I mean. I'm gonna just tell y'all how I even got the name. Like, yeah, people were wondering. I was like 13, 14. This is back when niggas used to skate and shit. My nigga Will, he he broke at the Supreme store. I was just skating with my niggas on Lennox Ledges and shit and you know, all them. Niggas, I was just showing niggas beats and my nigga Will was like, but well, what's gonna be your producer name? Like, can't be Kobe, because my real name Kobe. He was like, yeah. it's already a Kobe. I'm like, where are you right? Then he like, he skated away. Then he skated back, he like, Young Lunchbox, and then everybody started dying laughing. <laughs> you feel me? And I was like, fuck that name. Like, and then I went home, I'm like, nah, that shit kind of hard. Oh, for I ran real? with it. Now look. But I mean, he had to have like seen a Lunchbox or something. Like, you can't Bro, just... he said he was watching some like Japanese like anime or some shit. So That's so like, weird. That's like the most fuck. random thing I've heard. Cause like, and why did you even, why'd you like let go of the young part recently? Shit, I mean, I felt like it was too long, and like people already just call me Lunchbox. Like nobody calls me Young Lunchbox, so it's like, yeah, you just drop that shit, bro. It's Lunchbox. I was kind of happy you did that when I saw it because I'm like, there's just too many, there's too many Youngs, and mm -hmm. like you know, like too many Youngs, Lows, like you feel yeah. Me? And now the new thing is like abbreviations, like A B C this. Yeah, you yeah, feel yeah. Me? <laughs> I don't fuck with that. I hate yeah, that. I don't like that shit. I feel like if any artist has three letters behind their name, they're instantly gonna be like mid or like, yeah, dinner, like you know. That's just really hard. Yeah, but bro, I've been keeping up with your career for like a while now. Like you'd be posting um, just like these snippets on Twitter, yeah. And that's what got me intrigued because I was oh, like, word? his hard. melodies are insane. Like when I come on, I like who that is. I'm too clever, I'm too savvy. Like, bro, thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. I ain't gonna lie, like, I always just been on, like, been a musical person, like, so I guess that's really where it comes from. My mom and my dad, they used to, like, heavy in music and shit like that. Like, my mom, she was, like, in the choir that sang Jesus Walks and shit, like, the ARC choir. For real? The, yeah, the original song, she was in there. And my oh, dad, wow. he, like, played a bunch of, like, guitar for a few songs and shit. I don't know him off the top of my head right now, but... You feel what I'm trying to say? It's just always, my family always been into music, you feel me? So. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, your mom seems really supportive of your, like, music career, too, and just of you, so. Yeah, because it's like, I had, to, I had to show her, like, shit, this shit ain't, this shit ain't the 80s. They ain't about to fuck me over. Yeah. You feel me? I ain't, I ain't playing with these niggas, like, for real. Like, I'm about to get mine. like, you're going to get right. Hell yeah. Now, you seem really, like, hardworking, too, and just from, like, um, like, people can tell you really want it, you know? So. Yeah. Um, but I want to get into your, your sound obviously later, but since this is your first interview, I guess like myself and other people want to know yeah. like everything about your, like your background really, right, you know? like, cool. like, where, like where are you even from? Like I know we're in New York right now, but where yeah. are you from? Yeah, alright, so we in Harlem right now, right? Wait, we're we in, in like Harlem the, right now? Yeah, we in a gentrified part of Harlem, okay. born and raised, my pops passed away, mm. but he was like heavy into music, like he had like all the, like he was like a crazy guitarist, like all the guitars, like he worked sanitation and he'll spend all his money on music shit. Like, oh, for real? I swear to God, like. Like guitars me? and stuff? Yeah, yeah, like just new new laptops, new like microphones and condensers and shit, all types of shit. Mm -hmm. Whatever. So when he passed, unfortunately, all his like music equipment and shit, I just had that shit. So I'm like, nigga, like I always wanted to learn how to make music. Like, mm -hmm. and I'm like 13, so I'm like, shit, like, let me pick this shit up. Like, fuck it. But I have a question. So, like, okay, you were making beats. Yeah. And, and obviously, I want to get into like all the producing stuff because. Yeah. Like, if you check your catalog, you actually have some really sick stuff. Yeah. Where did you grow up? Like, I'm, I'm sure you grew up in, like, more North Harlem, right? Yeah, 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 on the East okay. Side, on the East Side. That shit was tough, bro. I ain't gonna lie, shit nasty. 
Well, the thing it's is, just, this part, like right here, we on Fifth Avenue, you see, it's nice, so it's gentrified and shit. It don't be that much going on, but like once you get inside the projects or like past, like across the street, pretty much, like shit yeah. crazy. You feel me? The whole Harlem is just different. Like, well, I'll tell you this. So, so you know, I'm from Canada, like, I'm not from yeah. here, right? I actually, um, like I'm moving here, so I'm staying right now Where? in like a sublet in like literally like five minutes from here. I'm dead. So so I thought that this area is like cool, like it's near Columbia University, like it's like students. Oh, see, the west side, see. Oh, I'm on the west side. I'm on the yeah, west side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the east side is like, it's like treacherous. It's like, there's more shit going on on the west side. It ain't really shit over here on the east side. So like, yeah. it's bullshit. Bro, you know what happened the other day? So my area is like I said, like, like you know, it's, it's fine, right? Uh, I like the place didn't come with the microwave, so I needed to go get a microwave. And the only place it was available was like deeper in Harlem, right? Oh man! And I just been spending so much money while I'm staying here, so I'm like, you know what? Let me just go walk and get it, okay? Fuck. I walked to the place in Harlem. I think it's like a, a PH JP some some sort of yeah. appliance store, or whatever. And dude, I grabbed the microwave, and I'm like deep into Harlem. I'm walking back to the train. And yo, like, I kind of got like mugged, you know? <laughs> and I, the microwave was only like $70. I was like, you know, I'll give Fuck. it up if I need to. But bro, they were like pressing me for the microwave. And what, um, bro? I don't know, they're trying to like test my gangsta, I guess, you know? So, but oh I, I, did, I didn't give it up though. I, I just kept walking. See, me personally, I never had a situation like that, but there's definitely there's definitely situations that happen like that. The East Side was more so just gang shit, like gang mm. violence, like. Block shit, Instagram shit, drill mm. shit, like that shit. You feel me? Yeah. Growing up in Harlem and New York in general is just like hard. Like this shit is a rat race for real. Like mm. you racing against eight million people, like yeah. literally, like for anything. Like even to get an ID at the fucking DMV, you racing against people. Like it's fucking thousands of people in there. Like for the simplest thing. So mm. like, but it's like. It, 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 it molds you into that person, like, yeah. it, it, it turns you into that, that different beast, you feel me? If it, especially if you really want something, mm -hmm. and you're from New York, you're gonna get it, for sure. How is it like, I know you had like a musical family already, but like seeing people like ASAP Rocky, yeah. uh, Tiana Taylor, yeah. and just like celebrities like Dapper Dan, like making it out of your neighborhood, like. It was crazy, but I'm gonna be real, I didn't really pay attention to them for real, cause I was, I was so much like all the Lil Wayne shit, mm -hmm. and all the Chief Keef, the Futures and shit, and that shit really molded me musically, I would say. Not not so much Harlem, mm. you feel me? I wanna ask how, how like you even got, you know, placements and stuff, because you said you started off producing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But if you look on like your genius credits, like bro, you've done stuff like Mad Stuff for Shaq yeah. West, um, something with Lancey, I don't know if it came out though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Lucky. Yeah. Um, but the Shaq West stuff is what I'm really intrigued about. Like, how did, you, where did that even come from? Like, if people are, just Harlem, are watching, that's why I was, that, it's just go back to Harlem, Facebook shit, bro. Yeah. Like, he see, like, bro, I used to be on the, on Facebook. I remember when Playboy Cardi dropped Broke Boy, like yeah. 2015. Yeah. All right, this is like right before that. Mm. So, like, I remember, like, we used to kind of treat Facebook like Instagram and all the kids like in New York that seen like, oh yeah, he on what I'm on, like he wear Supreme and shit, like mm. we start linking up. So that's how I met Shake and figured out we was already from Harlem, like we from the same hood damn near. So So what like, you saw he saw like your photos of you wearing Supreme and you guys added not each even, other? Not even on some shit like that. Yeah. It's just we we had the same like interests and same friend groups. So it's like it already made sense before it even happened. Mm. You get what I'm trying to say like and he was already like modeling, like chilling with ass pizza and shit. You know what I'm trying to mm -hmm. say? So it was just like, it was just some real like New York call and shit on, on the low. Once I started really rapping though, Shaq like, damn nigga. He like, cause I, I ain't had no beats. I'm making my beats. Right. So he like, damn nigga, you making these beats? Yeah. He like, nigga, I need some. <laughs> and then I remember like, I'm like, shit, just throw me $50 and I got you. $50? Yeah, just 50. I mean, bro, I was 15, bro. Right, right. And um, he was like, bet. And then, um. I sent him a beat. The first beat I sent him ever was Live Shack West. Mm. And then um, the nigga just went to Africa. Like, he didn't even get the rap on the shit. I was like, damn. <laughs> and then um, Nick came back, and the first thing he did was drop Live Shack West. I was like, what the fuck? So he Where like, are my $50? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did he like record that in Africa then, or what? No, I think he recorded it as soon as he got back or something, okay. because like, he was just in a different mode when he got back. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, we was just we already locked in on some Harlem shit, so he so just hit me you up. You just dropped Liv Shack West and you, you saw it online, you're like, yo, what the hell? Yeah, I'm like, it was my $50. And then <laughs> after that, um, we just started locking. I just started sending him hella shit. Like, yeah. it, started, it, it wasn't about the money at that like anymore, you feel me? Because right. he was just making shit happen. And then 
shit. I remember he sent he sent me some shit on the gram. I was like, what the fuck? It was Trav on live playing his shit. I was like, fuck, it's up, nigga. Mm. Like, fucking month went by. He's fucking signed the Cactus Jack. Man. Damn, so that was all before the Cactus shit. Oh yeah, this was before Damn. all of that. What, what was the song that Travis was playing on live? It's a song called I'm Not Kanye West. I think you might still be able to find a live. But okay. he was on. He was playing that shit. And he kept replaying. He replayed like three times. I was like, nah, he fucking with Shaq. It's yeah. over. Yeah. You feel me? Bro, I mean, you did like a majority of Mudboy. Like, the yeah. sound really came from you. Like, did that sound was you know did Shaq have input like yo make the beats kind of like this or did you just send I mean, it shit? i was already making beats like that so it was just like because really bro like i said i wasn't i was making beats because i ain't had no beats i wasn't making beats because i'm like i want to be a producer mm. so like it wasn't so much us curating a sound it just happened by accident mm. you know what i mean and um yeah bro it just we just made history if you think about it bro you kind of molded like the sound of Shaq West, or at least yeah, a little bit. Shaq West. Me and Reda, me and Reda, definitely. Yeah, Reda yeah. for sure as well. Yeah, definitely. For sure. I mean, are you still sending uh, beats to Shaq like to this bro, day? Bro, I haven't made a beat in like a year and some change. Oh, bro. for real? I'm gonna be real. But he be asking, bro. I got some. I got some some new shit ASAP, bro. I'm gonna send him some new shit, bro. Yeah, do it. I just been, bro. I've been, I've been so like tapped out of beats, bro. Mm. Cause like just being a producer is hard. Yeah. <laughs> What's, what's like the hardest part about being a producer? Just making shit that niggas want to get on. Mm. Like, cause like I said, bro, I don't know how to make a beat for a person. I've always made beats for like, I've just made what I like to make. For yourself. So like, yeah, yeah. It's just, you feel me? That's pretty much the hardest part is like, oh shit, gonna need some beats or da da da, need some beats. Like, you feel me? That's how I used to be when I was like really a producer and shit. And I'm like, well, I don't got beats for this nigga. Right. Like they, they're like, yo, Fabio need some beats. I'm like, bro, I don't got no drill beats. Like, why y'all? Like, what? <laughs> but that's how producers are. They make yeah. different folders and they make different kinds of beats. And it's like, I was never doing that. I was just making, having fun. Yeah, I guess that's just not you, bro. Like, yeah. you're meant to be an artist. And um, definitely. Yo, so why hasn't Shaq released any like projects? Like, I do. Do you ever bro, ask him? I be telling him, bro, drop. But I don't know. Y'all got to ask him, man. He's waiting on your beats, bro. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah. Nah, but um, I feel that. I mean, obviously, we've seen it with people like like Wheezy um, up here, born like they were. Yeah. They were artists first, and then they realized the producing thing was working more for them. Yeah. And then someone like Pierre, like he realized, nah, like I really want to be an artist which is, I guess, kind of what, what's going on with you. Yeah. What's, what's your advice for producers trying to come out their shell and like become an artist? My whole process of really becoming the artist I am today was really, really, really judging my music hard as fuck. Mm. Like, don't just think because you're a producer, you're about to be the best artist. Because like, I had that in my head. Mm. And like, that's not what's going to happen. You got to put in the same amount of work as you put in on the beats, on the microphone, if you really want to be that. So really think like, is this really what you want to do? And if it's really what you want to do, just do it, like, and do it every day. Just mm. like you do them beats every day. Mm. Like, don't stop. Like, bro, my favorite artist, Uzi, fucking Future, Chief Keef, like, when I was listening to these niggas, I'm like, bro, how can I make my music as good as this shit? Mm. Like, what do I need to do to get my shit on this level? And, you know, like, I just try to check all those boxes, lyricism, melodies, flows, all that mm. shit. You got you to gotta work on all of that. Like, Hell yeah. everything's a process. Yeah, I think it's easy to like not be critical of yourself when you're coming up because you're like, well, I'm just starting up, you know, but yeah, that's kind of true. If you're like really hard on yourself and really trying to be like, nah, like I don't want to be good for just a random kid. Like I want to be on the level of like a um, Uzi or whatever. Right? Yeah, like, bro, it's I'm, not, push you. I'm not just making music like I'm having fun, obviously, but mm -hmm. I'm not just making music just just to make music. Like I'm trying to be the best. Like mm -hmm. I want to be one of the best. Like all that other shit be sounding cool, mm -hmm. but I don't care about that, cause I, I mean, I had the money and all that shit. Like with the beats and shit, I could have kept making beats for a lot. Like you yeah. feel me? But I rather, I rather really show people what I could do. So I fuck with that, bro. I mean, especially listening to niggas like Lil Wayne. Like, yeah. how could you not? Of you course, me? yeah, yeah. Man, how would you even then describe your your sound then? Because, like, like let's say to someone who's never ever heard of you, right? Like, how would you describe your music, your artist music? Shit, Chief Keef. Doug, and a little bit of Uzi. 
Is there like a, is there like a name for like your sound? Like I don't know. Like I guess. I mean, right now we calling it new jazz. You feel me? Cause new like, jazz. Yeah, we calling it new jazz because like a lot of people been pointing out, and like I got this new producer named Amir. Mm -hmm. A lot of people been pointing out, and like his production and shit is like it's like remnants of a of a saxophone or something like mm. of like just like jazz like the rhythm is like you know what I'm trying to say so we just been trying I don't know I don't even know what to call it for real though yeah. but that's what we've been calling it right now new jazz you feel me fuck with that I think <laughs> I, I think I saw next up posting about that producer and like how people are like yeah. using the sound and whatnot yeah when I come on like who that is I'm too clever I'm too savvy they too savage. Amir is different. He's gonna be a problem, bro. I'm telling yeah. you right now. Okay. I'm gonna look out for him. I'm telling you. I think you have like a lot of potential and you've kind of only scratched the surface of like how big you can be, right? Yeah. Um, but you definitely have a fan base now because when we make posts and stuff, I'm like, let's say like we we include you in the post, like people will comment and shit and really support you. So like yeah. when did things kind of like start working for you as an artist? Like when do you think people started caring about you? As an artist, I feel like I'm gonna be real. Mm -hmm. Once he was like, bro, let me get on mode, mm. that's when niggas started giving a fuck. I'm finna get in that mode. I'm finna get in that mode. I'm a diamond on the whip. I'm a diamond on a boat. I mean, I got a lot of fans that was here before, and I be remembering them too. Like, I be seeing them in the Discord. Them niggas ride hard. Mm. And them niggas be like, shit, I told y'all. But really, he definitely helped give that nudge, cause like, bro, like, he was just on some shit like, Yo, bro, let me get on that. Like, mm -hmm. I was like, bet, sent the open. He sent it right back the next day. I was like, damn, all right, bet, I'm about yeah. to drop it. Like, and he went crazy on that yeah, too. Yeah, it was just like, whatever. Like, it, it was one of them things where it was like, you feel me? Like, we just like being homies. Like, we just having fun, like, just making music. But you knew, but you already knew you. Like, how did you meet Yeet in the first place? I mean, all right, so I met Yeet through them Twitter group chats. So, mm -hmm. like, bro, I know y'all hear about them shits all the time. All the but time, like, yeah. Everybody was in them shits. Like I'm talking about, even from like the the young bands and like the like Nolan B Rollins and like the Captain Crunches and like all the old SoundCloud was like in them chats and all of the new SoundCloud was in them chats. So like the Summers and the Can Cans and the like them niggas was in them chats too. Oh, so it was like yeah, just group chat shit. You feel me? And just Yeet found his way in there. Next Tail found his way in there. And then like I met them boys and mm. you know what I mean. We was just cool through there, and then when they moved out to New York, because they lived in New York, like, well, kind of, like, kind of New York. They were staying in New Jersey, but mm -hmm. that's New York. Um, yeah. We was just linking up and shit like that, just regular shit, like, just homie shit, like, you mm -hmm. feel me? And, um, it, like, we never thought anything of it. We was just all trying to make it, you feel what I'm trying to say? Like, mm -hmm. nobody was ever on some shit like, oh, like, this is Yeet, or this is lunch, like. Mm -hmm. We was just also on some shit like, yo, I'm Kobe, like, mm -hmm. it was good. Like. I'm guessing that was like our early Yeet, like before Yeah, this it was success. like 2018, 2019 oh, type yeah. shit, you feel me, so. Damn. Before all of that shit, for sure. What did you seeing him go from like zero to like being the most talked about artist at times on the internet? Like, I don't know, what did you learn from, from bro, seeing that? Bro, it's funny, it's funny, bro, because in them chats, they used to try to flame Yeet, like. For real? Like. Like, don't get me wrong, we would all joke on each other. Like, that's one thing, but like, them niggas used to try to play with Yeet sometimes. Like, not all them niggas, but some of them niggas used to try to play with Yeet. And like, just seeing him like get played with to like really being like the unfuckwittable is like, whoa, like, mm. it's like the most inspiring shit ever. You feel what I'm trying to say? Like, how could you not want to go crazy now? Mm. You just seen a homie go crazy. Mm. And like, I seen a lot of people like, count yeet lives bro because he's white or because he's this or because he's that mm. now look you feel me so yeah bro you going crazy bro you ever bring that up to yeet like yo imagine those days and uh, like i uh, remember back to those days in the group chat when people would flame you and like yeah but i'm gonna be real bro i don't even like i said it once or twice but i don't really even say that because it's like it's like you don't even want to say it to him because it's like bro like Shit ain't, it ain't shit funny, like. Yeah. It's just like, he just like, he just upped it, like, what now? Like, For you know what I mean? And it's like, it's so fire to see, because it's like, he deserves it, bro. I seen him put in work, like, he would send hella snippets to the group chat and niggas would not reply. Yeah. Like, bro, I'm telling you right now, like, I know a lot of people don't know this, but bro, Yeet used to be in a group chat and send hella snippets, like, and be like, Man, fuck y'all niggas. I ain't even listen to my shit. He wouldn't say niggas, but like, of course. obviously, but he would, you know what I'm trying to say? He'd be like, fuck y'all, you ain't even listen to my shit. Like, yeah. but it would be like, 
bro, now look, he's going fucking crazy. And all that shit was crazy too. It's mm-hmm. just like, he made so much fucking music because he really wanted that shit. And like, now look, it, it worked. So, you know what I mean? Man, that's like the, it's crazy. I've never even heard that story. I'm like, wow, like, I must have respect you. But you guys both work with like the same producers a lot. And you're actually part of this clique that's called Solo and Dawn. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I wouldn't say Yee is a part of it. Well, well not Yee, but I'm saying you. Like, you're, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I'm pretty much just like the artist, not the artist, because there's a few artists in there. Mm-hmm. I'm one of the artists. Me personally, I like fucking with producers. So, like, Dulio, Benji Cole, mm-hmm. Gio Got Bands, all them kids. Like, Amir is now in it, Miles, you feel what I'm trying to say, all them kids. Like, Rizin. Like, I can't think of everybody off the top of my head, so don't kill me out. But, right, right. <laughs> and I'm gonna be real, them niggas helped turn me up because they was just lacing me with the craziest beats. Like, yeah. literally, like, the craziest beats. Like, I'm talking about, I'm sitting in Discord with these niggas for hours. Like, yo, nah, put this there, nah, put that there. All right, bet. And then rapping on it. Mm. So, being locked in with producers is like the best thing you could do. Of course. Best thing you could do. For sure. I mean, I think you guys, honestly, if you think about it, like, okay, there's been groups like working on dying. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm missing. There's one other big group. What is it? Working on dying. Uh, uh, I'm forgetting. But anyways, there's a lot of there's yeah. a lot of oh like a hyper pop and, and all. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Do you guys shape like the sound of the last like year and a half, two years? If you really think about it, you know, Low like key. like Benji Cole, yeah. um, Geo, like all you guys. So, like, how do you feel about that? Because I know you, you didn't do many beats with the group. Yeah, you know, yeah. you were mostly an artist. But like, how do you feel about that? Like, you're you're low key part of the the next like big group. Man, I'm just, I mean, I'm just happy for all them kids, like, because like you said, I ain't really making no beats, but I'm just happy they really doing what need to be done, you feel what I'm trying to say? Because, like, we need we need more of that. We need more of that, like, community feeling, like, yeah. you get what I'm trying to say? Like, I feel like a lot of producers don't really, I mean, there's a lot of collectors. I'm not going to say there's not a lot of collectors, but I feel like they don't have that community in sense like community yeah. feeling where it's like oh yeah he fuck with him and he fucks with them that they came up with this yeah you know what i mean it's just it feels better that way so i'm happy for them kids bro they going crazy bro i'm actually about to go meet them in la right now we're about to go hot out oh for real yeah like music tape. that's what's up i shouldn't have told y'all that but <laughs> <laughs> nah i mean i can't wait but bro i actually do like um so i do like some anr consulting on the yeah. side right and you would be surprised that groups like when when there's a group of like producers and artists like all of these ANRs are all looking at, like, for example, they fuck with you, right? Mm-hmm. Then they're going to look at other, like, Benji, and they're going to yeah. be like, oh, well, no, if Lunchbox makes music with him, and, you know, Benji does beats for, for Lunchbox, like, nah, like, we got to look into him, too, you know? Yeah. So it really does help that you guys are all, like, you feel like you're all kind of coming up together. Yeah, it just, ma- it just makes too much sense, bro. It just makes too much sense, you feel me? Random question. Do you have any more stuff with you coming soon? Or, like, I'm sure you guys have stuff recorded in the vault. I mean... Bro, he's just so busy. It's like I can imagine, yeah. Like I don't want to be, I don't want to be the person to be like, yo, let's lock in. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? Obviously, he always down to lock in, but I'm just more so like it's gonna happen when it happens. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, we still cool. We still be talking all the time. So. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm gonna keep it real. I think that music wise, if I'm comparing you to like other artists in your lane and your size, right? Yeah. I feel like you definitely make a, a lot better music than them. Um, but I don't see you using like your social media as much as them or like, I guess like flexing as much as them. You know how like an artist moves, right? Yeah. Um, and I guess that could work in your favor. Maybe it couldn't. But like, do you ever feel like as an artist, you're kind of forced to just like be in front of the camera so, so much and like post on social media when you don't want to? Bro, like- I like, I like posting. I like being on the ground. But, bro, like, I'm just so much of a perfectionist that sometimes I don't even be wanting to post. Like, mm. you know what I'm trying to say? It's not so much I don't like being in front of the camera. It's just like, I don't, cause I, I'm a, I'm a big believer in like history. So like, how are we gonna look back in this shit, back at this shit in five years? That's how I look at everything I do. So mm. that's why I try to make everything like special. So I feel like if I don't got nothing really special to post, I don't even want to post it. Like mm. if it's not, if I'm not upping it again, I don't even want to post it. Like mm. it don't, cause it don't matter. Like posting random fish and shit is cool. Flexing all that shit cool. But like at the end of the day, like I'm trying to be the best rapper. Like mm. I, I don't care about flexing. Like I could flex in a little pic in a music video or something like mm-hmm. you know what I'm trying to say but I don't really care about all that shit like 
Yeah. You feel I, what I'm trying to say? I guess the sucky part about being an artist is that like, and I'm with you because I'm the yeah. same way. Like I think that anything you put out has to be, has to have like meaning behind it, right? Yeah. And uh, have like purpose. But the sucky part about being an artist or a creator in general is that you just have to like satisfy the algorithm and you just have to post things. Yeah, that's why, you know? that's why, that's why I do post a lot of my yeah. story. Like I post a lot of my story. I might not post me a lot of my story, I try not. I try to go live a little bit more, mm-hmm. but um, bro, I feel like I feel like if I want to post every day, bro, like it gotta be like bigger and better every post. Mm-hmm. Like it can't just be oh I'm chilling on the block like or I'm ch- in the studio s- smoking weed like right. You know what I'm trying to say or like here here here's ten thousand dollars like mm-hmm. I'm not about to be doing that like. If I'm going flex, it got to be some shit. Like, right, right. I got to be having like the 2026, like Bentley truck or some shit. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? I feel that, man. I mean, what do you think then? You know, what do you think is actually going to take you to like the next step? I know you like think about this stuff all the time. Like, yeah, I think about this shit every day, man. I think about shit every hour, every second of the day. But mm. I mean, really, what's going to take me to the next step is just me, bro. I just got to keep dropping, keep playing out the best me I could possibly put out. And mm-hmm. keep dropping videos and content for the people. That's really the one thing I'm trying to work on more is, like, I feel like I'm lacking in the content um, area, but mm. it, it takes time, you feel me? Definitely takes time. I remember we were talking, um, and you mentioned to me that you're really tired of, like, drill music, you know, and, oh, and you don't want to make that, and you're, you know, you, you being from New York, like, what makes you say that? I mean, just the thing, right? I like drill music, like... Don't get me wrong, I'm from New York, so obviously I'm going to like drill music. I don't like what is done to the artistry. Like, I feel like a lot of drill artists, not all, a lot, um, they tend to just like sacrifice the artistry for just straight disrespect, disses, and like straight yelling. Like, and wow. sometimes it's like unlistenable. You feel me? Like, me, I love K Flock. Like, like, even some of B Love earlier shit, like Pop Smoke, like all the niggas, like, like when drill music is good, it's very fucking good. Yeah. But when it's bad, it's very fucking bad. Yeah. So it's like, there's really two sides to that coin, you know what I'm trying to say? I feel that, bro. I, I talk about this all the time, and you know, it sucks for me because I have to, like, you know, you have to interview people that are, like, doing well and stuff, right? So sometimes, like, I'll be like, do I want to interview this person because I think their music is good? Absolutely not. Yeah. Do I have to kind of do it because this will run up? The, the view is like that makes sense probably, yeah, you know? you, but some of the stuff like and I don't I'm not trying to name any names you know but like some of the stuff from like the Bronx and whatnot is like dude they just straight up yell same flow same words like they just use the same words it's unlistenable um, but there's some great stuff too like yeah, you said yeah. K-Flock and yeah, yeah, yeah. whatnot definitely definitely um, but um yeah like I mean drill just get, dr- I don't know bro I don't know bro it's just I don't know it's cool though shout yeah. out to the kids they're doing what they do. What do you think New York lacks then when it comes to music? New York lacks a sense of identity and we lack a sense of like true artistry. Like I feel like there isn't like there isn't people that really care about the music like that no more. And if they do, it's like there there isn't much light shed on them. Mm. Because like New York is a rat race, like I said. Whatever catches the most attention is gonna get the most views. So like you know what I'm trying to say? That's pretty much self-explanatory. I don't got to name no names, but right. you know what I mean? Like, all the hottest shit in New York right now is just like, it's not good. But it's attention grabbing, so mm-hmm. people going to watch it. I don't want to name names, but I saw that you replied to this tweet, and it was from, like, a pretty big producer who was pretty much saying, like, something along the lines of, like, rap is super bland nowadays. And then someone responded, and they were like, well, you're not looking in the right places. And then he was like, yeah, like, I'm not even looking. Yeah, that shit pissed me off, bro. I'm going to be real. Like, I feel like everybody, right, everybody who feels like, oh, like, music is trash right now, da-da-da-da-da, there ain't no artist. Bro, right now, you have to be real. There's the most rappers we've ever had ever right now. Like, ever. Mm-hmm. Like, there was never this many rappers in the 80s. Like, like just that's just the facts. So, like, I feel like there's going to be more bullshit. Like, when you have more of anything, there's going to be more bullshit. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm trying to say? But there's also a lot of good shit. There's a lot of good shit. So, I feel like 
Man, that shit is just lazy. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I was so mad in that tweet. Like, it wasn't even on personal. It's just like, you can't really just say that. You just can't, you can't be a Grammy winning nominated or nominated producer, whatever, and say that. That's right. what I said. That's what yeah. I meant. Yeah, you definitely can be like, well, no, I'm not willing to look in the right places. It's like, well, duh, if you go on academics and you just see like what's yeah. laid out for you, you're not going to find the best stuff. You might as well just get off your phone at that point. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Um, no, I, I, I honestly feel that a lot because yeah. our whole brand is called Kids Take Over. There's a lot of like yeah. old heads that will comment and stuff, and I'm sometimes I'm like, yo, you just have to look. Like you literally just have yeah. to look, you know. And and what? Let's say you don't even. Let's say you really like lyrical rap. Like even that, you just have to look, and you'll find yeah. it. You know, you'll find it. You'll find whatever you want. Right. You want techno? You want you want funk? You want whatever the fuck you want? You're gonna find that shit. Right. True. Well, I mean, so okay. I know we were talking about like drill music and yeah. Jersey Club, like. You don't make that at all. So no. would you go and ever like collab with an artist like that? What do you think? Have you I tried mean, it? The music got to make sense. Right. Like if it is, if I know it's not going to sound right, we not, it's not going to happen. Like, right. I don't care. I don't care if I even listen to your music. Like it's not going to happen. Really? Like, like just being real, like I fuck with Pop Smoke, but like that wouldn't have been a good song. <laughs> if you guys made a song together? Once in Pop Smoke, I don't know. I fuck with Pop though. He hard to yeah, he's a legend. I mean... Okay, well, let's say, like, Ice Spice wanted to make a song with you. Like, she's huge. Like, at a certain point, you have to think of it, like, in, in the business decision as well. Yeah, though. that's true. That's definitely true. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would do it, but, like, I'm not a fan of doing shit that I don't want to do for, like, monetary or, like, you know what I'm trying to say? I don't, right. I don't give a fuck about that. I respect that. I respect that. I mean, well, hey, man, I had fun. Um, cool finally meeting you in person. You know, I know, like, we've talked on the internet and stuff yeah. but i like i really do think you have potential and i i send thank your you, work bro. to a lot of people and i love appreciate it man. you bro for real for real bro Hell yeah. thank you bro i fuck with kids take over man you should appreciate it all right y'all niggas going crazy man y'all doing what y'all, what y'all gotta do man what's like your one message to, to the people uh listening if you could say one thing i mean shit like not to be cliche but like anything you do just go crazy bro like bro this shit is real life this shit is not no fucking game bro like you only got one chance or this shit is over. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? So make the best of it. Do everything you need to do to get what you want to get, what you have to get, what you Respect, need to get, bro. what you destined to. Oh yeah, <laughs> Respect. Well, hey man, this is fun. Um, yeah, bro, you, you got to play me some unreleased stuff. I got I'm, you, I wasn't, bro, wasn't joking, sure, but bro, I got you. You guys are watching Kids Take Over, this is Lunchbox. Yo guys, thank you for watching this interview. I appreciate it. Um, love Lunchbox's music. And I appreciate you guys for just even, you know, tuning into KTO all this time. I know I've been so, so inconsistent with the uploads. Like, it's supposed to be every week, you know, but I would say the last two, three months, I wish I could have done things a bit differently. But, you know, I'm looking to the future. We have new shows I want to bring you guys so that it's not just interviews, um, better interviews, obviously. More, you know, vlogs where I kind of talk about the story. I know you guys missed that. Um, and yeah, so follow us at Kate's Takeover. That's on all platforms. Um, you know, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. That's just weird. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna see you guys next time.